I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone's everyone's. I am here for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 9, Episode 6. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you return and you family over here, you one of my peoples, welcome back. Now, y'all, I need y'all to help me make sense of the scene with Jewels because it didn't seem like it was a sufficient amount of lighting going on when he was getting his tattoo. Now, me and myself has never had a tattoo, but I'm thinking that we're going to need a proper amount of light going on. We sitting in here in this very unwell lit room. Like, even the blinds wasn't up. Like, y'all could have opened up the blinds so we can get some natural sunlight going in. So the tattoo artist can see what's going on. Now, I know Jewel is on house arrest at this current time. So he can't go to the tattoo shop where they got nice lights going on. But, like, we couldn't get a floor lamp. We couldn't got a lamp and took the shade off and put it right next to you. So we can got... Some we couldn't open up the blinds. We couldn't do none of this to get make sure that we have some a sufficient amount of lighting going on. Now, I know I can't be the only one who was thinking that when we was having this scene. But anyways, they discussed how their son was at school. And y'all know kids can be cruel whether they, like, it's intentional or not. He didn't found out at school that his, what his daddy did at the airport. Daddy was high at the airport, tried to take a gun on a plane, then took off running, and your daddy in trouble. They wanted to be the ones to tell little Jewels and little Bella, but some little kid at school didn't already beat them to the punch. Now, I don't know why they've taken this long to tell them, because like, he didn't already did the crime. He didn't already was waiting on the decisions to make, and he didn't, he has already had this plea deal. So before the kids at school had a chance to tell your son what you did, I mean, I would, I would think that, you know, since you going away pretty soon, that y'all would have told them, but they didn't. So, you know, now it's time to sit down and they're going to have to sit down with the kids and tell them what was going on. But I was just confused as to why we didn't have a sufficient amount of lighting while he was getting his tattoo. We couldn't have did this in the kitchen where it was more lighting going on. I guess not. See, y'all, I am almost tired of talking about Joe and Sin because we're having the same conversations. It's just a different episode. He's sitting there in his confessional. He said he doesn't understand why Sin is so unhappy, especially with him. But then he goes to say, well, she is always saying how we're not having an upset. You know, I'm always working and I'm never home. But I'm like, that's why she's mad. You just act like, I don't know why she's mad. I mean, she did say this. Like, we put, we need to put two and two together. She, he might be going to postpartum depression. You know, you not making her feel loved like you used to. She didn't picked up a little weight and she's feeling unloved at this time. And you steady not want to listen to her. That's what I feel like is going on. But he's saying like she hasn't done her part of sacrificing. Why he's out here busting his tail to support the family like I'm sacrificing my time with you. This is I'm trying to get my Joe Button voice on. Work with me, y'all. Work with me. I'm sacrificing is in our relationship, but my partner is not sacrificing what she needs to do in our relationship. I am out here working my whole entire tail off to the support the family, you know, not only myself, but the woman I love and our child. And his mom was looking at him like, so you're not giving sin enough sex. I'm like, while you're over here having this whole conversation with your mama, you could have been at home spending time with sin and giving her what you needed. Did anybody else feel like it? I know I can't be the only one that was thinking that. Like, why are you over here venting about what sin is not doing and why sin is mad at you? You could have been at home, you know, spending time with sin, having sex with sin, doing something because at this current time, you're not at work. This time, you could have been spending time with sin, but you were over at your mama's house complaining about why sin is mad at you. I just did not get that. Now, let's move over here to Mariah Lynn. So, Mariah Lynn's mama's back on drugs. Now, when we first saw Mariah Lynn's mama, Mariah Lynn's, mom, Mariah Lynn's mama was pregnant and in jail. Now, I'm assuming she got caught with some drugs, cop stealing or whatever. But now, Mariah Lynn has custody of her little sister. And she's stressed. Like, I'm um, taking care of my little sister. So, that didn't, like, just threw her whole entire life into a loop. 
My mama's in jail for the umpteenth time and I'm always bailing her out. I have people on social media saying this, that, and the third. I have my sister and my nephew to take care of. But she's like, you know what, I'm just going to get full soul custody of my little sister and just strip my mama of all her rights because I'd be damned if my little sister goes through what I went through dealing with my mama and her drug issues. But, you know... Jonathan's there to listen to her and what's going on but at this time he's worried about Anais and what's going on with her now I seen the pictures of Anais and Anais looked very very slim like she was it was like creepy how skinny she was looking this ain't like I done lost a, a little bit of weight and I'm looking good this is like I done lost some weight and it's like um, is very unhealthy looking. So what he does is he goes over there to see Rich Dollars. Now I'm like, why would Rich know where Anais is at? Because you know they relationship kind of you know went very very south last season when you know he found out that Anais was still living at home with her husband. She had kids and all this that and the third. But since he's worried about his, he just, Anais is not his friend. This is his sister. He worried like maybe Rich know what was going on. So he talks to Rich and Rich says he's seen the pics and yeah, and I used she was looking very unhealthy in this picture. Very, very frail. I don't know what's going on. He didn't say that. He did say he knows what was going on. Like she been going to in and out of the mental hospital. Ruben has committed her several times in the last few months. And I guess somehow she was able to contact Rich. Like help me get up out of here. I don't need to be here. But the nurses are like, she needs to be here. She's not taking her medication. And she's talking about all kinds of conspiracy theories. And she's talking about she's a bird and she can fly. Like, she needs to be here quick, fast, and in a hurry and all the time. But they going to pray for her and hopefully she do better. I don't I don't know if Anais had mental problems in the past. Is this something new or is it the stress from the show, stress from life? But the way Rich was putting it, like, yeah, Anais, she's been going through some things. Like, she's been in and out the hospital a few times because Ruben was like, uh-uh, you ain't about to write right now. I'm scared that you're going to hurt yourself, me or the kids or somebody else. You need to be in a mental hospital right now. So I was like, oh, okay. Where was I yet? Because I kind of like skipped over some stuff because I was talking about Jonathan. But anyways, where was I at? Okay. Since you well made the plea deal, the judge is like, okay, we're going to give you a little leniency. So, you know, you can be out and about. You can go to your son's birthday party. You can go ahead and move back home with Kim Bill and them. And I was like, that, that, you can do that? I, I didn't know. See, I don't know nothing about the judicial system. And like, okay, since I done made this plea deal, I'm just like free to just roam, just be out there in the streets like that. But Joel says that, you know, he can come to the little boy's birthday party. He can go back home with Kimbell and the kids. Everything gonna be cool. Everything's honky door. I was like, okay. I, I guess. But, you know, they finally, when they get home, had to tell the kids... You know, daddy got to go to prison. Daddy was out here being bad. That's why I tell you, do not be, you need to be a good boy. And stay as far away from the jail and the prison system as you can. Okay? Because you don't want to end up like me. And, y'all, it was just sad seeing the kids. Because that was like, will God bring you back if we wish for it? I'm like, oh. He's like, well, can't you ask the, you know, the judge to not let you go away for a while? He's like, man, I've been asking that a long time. And I was like, man, that was just like so heartbreaking. The kids seemed very, very upset. It was falling out. It was crying. They don't want daddy to leave. It's like hard enough that daddy wasn't in the house for however long it was. But now you got to go to prison and I can't go over to grandma's house to see you. And the only thing I can do is just like talk to you on the phone. Little girl was like, I don't even know your phone number. Like how I'm going to call you. Y'all, it was very, very sad. So let's move over here to, to Alexis Scott. Now, she feels some type of way because she's worried about her label since, you know, the feds are investigating in 6 9 and Shardy. Are they going to have time to focus on her career? Is Treyway going to stay in business? So she tells, you know, Shardy, you know, she feels pushed to the side. Like, okay, I didn't sign this record deal and y'all act like y'all ain't got time to be work with me. Now, y'all, I don't remember until this season Alexis Sky having any kind of, you know, inkling of wanting to be a singer or a rapper. 
I really don't. Now, mind you, I don't follow her except on when it's on Love and Hip Hop and I see her. So, y'all let me know below. Was she always aspiring to be a singer and rapper or and or rapper? Or was this just, okay, I'm going to be on the show and I got to have something to make me be on the show? Y'all let me know. But he lets her know. Things do not run on the Lexus time. They don't run on your speed, baby, okay? So, you know, can we also agree that you won't be out here putting your songs on SoundCloud without my permission? But she feels like y'all not doing anything for me, so I'm going to do it for myself. I'm like, if you want to be independent, then why you need a record label? If you were already going to go around the record label and put your mu music on SoundCloud, which I haven't... You know, heard anything. Y'all let me know if y'all have. If you're going to do all that, then what you need a record label for? If you're going to do everything yourself? I don't know, y'all. Mm -mm. But says so she going to continue to release her music since, you know, ain't nobody else looking out for her. She going to look out for her. Cause she got a baby to take care of. Fetty Wap already not, you know, really helping her with a baby. But she don't need no man to help her take care of her baby. She going to do it on her own. I said, I guess, girl. I guess. So, y'all... That was the just. We didn't see no Yandy this episode, which, you know, if I'm going to be honest, I wasn't exactly mad about that. Because Yandy really don't have no storyline. Like, I've been tired of Yandy since, like, season one, when she was all up in Jim Jones and Christie's business. Like, I would love for them to come back, but I don't, I think they didn't, like, you know, they fell out with Mona Scott Young, so they not going to come back. But, anyways, that was the just. If I left anything out, oh, yeah. What's her name? Sydney Star. She went into the booth and homegirl thought she killed it. She had a week on this song. Rich and ass. Jaquay. Is that his name? So, you know, give her like a little bit of beat or whatever. And she get in there and she thinks she doing something. And they like, uh, okay. That's all you got, girl? So she come out like, yeah, that was it, wasn't it? And then I was like, no, you been you been chasing me on social media for the last four years and you come here with this? But I'm like, Rich, have you heard the girl's music before? Have you heard her rap before? Have you heard her sing before? Is this the first time you're hearing her, you know, vocals in all of life? I just need to know this. So she goes to see Naya like, look here, girl. I thought I was killing it in the booth. But then Rich was like, no, ma'am, you need to like totally just throw that away. And she, you know, did her little verse for her. And Naya's like, you know what? It wasn't good, boo-boo. Sydney goes on about how it's been hard for her as a transgender woman. And how, you know, she still hasn't had the... um all the surgery to become a woman and you know she was hiding that from people and she thought it would you know be better if she said that she was post-op and people would be more you know have more respect for her but she does want to have a surgery and you know she went she was out here lying to folks and she's like i can't be doing that no more because a lot of transgender women and men have been getting being killed because you know people find it out that you know you haven't had your surgery and all that stuff but you know it seemed like naya and you know I'm about to call Jasmine Scott. Alex, what's that saying? Not her name. What's her name? Oh, I just had it, y'all. Sydney Star. So it seemed like they're gonna be good friends. So yeah, that was the just. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you returning, you family, you my people over here, go tell your people to tell their people to come over here and be my people. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.